The studio is BART for me. Um, it almost is just a big open room that comes alive when he's there. When I think of his studio, I think of openness. I think of the sense of being able to reach past your personal boundaries and to feel nature and to be a part of nature. Once I'm back in the studio, I have these maquettes that I've made in the field, these studies done directly from life. And the joy of that is that I have memories that go far beyond the physical maquette sitting in the studio. I have memories of what the smells were, what the sounds were. Where the sun was. Was the sun in front of me or was it hitting the back of my neck? And when I look at the sculptures, I can remember all those things. The fullness of the memories helps me immensely in the studio to bring life into the sculptures. When I'm in the studio, it's utterly quiet. And I like it that way because I can mentally transport myself any place I wish to be. And certainly working on the chimpanzees, I've been trying to remember the bird calls, the insect sounds, and the way the trees moved in the breeze as the chimps sat and ate quietly or moved through the forest around me. The pace in the studio is whatever I choose it to be because it's my time. There is no calendar there. There is certainly no clock on the wall. There's no watch on my wrist. And time is whatever I make it to be. When Bart's in the middle of a piece at home, he still is very focused. And I have to tell him to come in for dinner and tell him again, now you have five minutes, and tell him again. Um, because when he's into a piece, he won't stop. He won't realize it's 4 o'clock. He doesn't feel well because he should have stopped at noon to have lunch and he didn't bother. When I'm in the studio and I'm enlarging, there are sometimes moments where I realize that this is crazy. I've got this 8-inch high model and I'm enlarging it to life size. By and large, I'm focused on what I'm doing and I'm focused on trying to get the masses where they belong, the gesture, the movement. I'm hoping to give these sculptures some life. I'm hoping to imbue them with a sense of vitality that speaks to the viewer. The bronze casting process is a age-old means for casting bronze objects which today has become relegated mostly to casting sculpture. But we are a service to the sculptor much the way a photo processing developer uh, would be to the photographer. The sculptor will bring us their original image in some sort of three-dimensional form. We will transfer that original image into bronze. The process of casting in bronze using the lost wax method is laborious. It takes many, many hands. And each step along the way is dependent on the step before. Everybody has to work in concert. Everybody has to keep the final objective in mind. What would happen is we would make a rubber mold. Once the rubber mold has been completed, we need to make a wax positive. That wax positive or casting is made by first painting in a layer of wax to the mold. Once we have painted the wax into the mold, we will close the mold. The mold will then be filled with wax and allowed to sit in the mold for a minute or so, after which we dump out the volume and that would give us our wax casting. This is allowed to cool 
and uh, it's opened. The wax is removed from the mold. Uh, the wax casting is then sent for touch-up. We have a number of artists who work in our shop and they will try to replicate or uh, recreate details that have been lost through the mechanical process of reproducing that wax. It's been, I think, two years now that I've been working on this stuff almost exclusively. I have to go back in and replace all the hand and palm and finger texture that got obliterated in the smoothing of the seam. Definitely a process. Once the waxes have been touched up, the wax will be dipped into the ceramic slurry. The process requires a number of coats. First we put on a primary coat with the sand. Then we would start to use backup coats and build a mold that we can then pour bronze into. We'll fire the molds. As we fire the ceramic, which will become vitrified, the wax will then burn out and drain from the, the mold, leaving a mold cavity behind that we can then fill with bronze. The, the bronze is allowed to cool. We then start to remove the ceramic mold that we had built over top of the wax, which is now over top of the bronze. Once the piece has been sandblasted, the sprues and gates which we added in the wax would now be removed. They're brought into the finishing area where we clean up the casting. We remove excess metal, correct small defects. We would add pieces back in and uh, weld them, chase them so that the textures would again match and then it's ready for patina. Final part of what we do for the artist is we add a coloration to the metal. We artificially oxidize the surface, which is referred to as a patination. Then the final result is always covered with a coat of wax.